Alright, so now that we're through the boring administrative setup process of Eventbrite tickets, let's go ahead and set up our first ticketed event. We're going to create it on the WordPress side, and we're going to send it over to Eventbrite. We're going to save it as a draft for this screencast, although we'll see the finished product in action on the front end in a future screencast. Here I'm just going to show you the setup process, and this should be really easy because as you're about to see, it's almost identical to the process of setting up an event for the first time without the Eventbrite connection. Here's what I mean. Here I am on the back end of my site, and rather than watch you watch me walk through the entire process of creating the event, I've kind of pre-filled some of the information in here for you. But as you can see, this is going to be nothing out of the ordinary. I have my title, my description, I've set whatever category I want to have it tied to, I've set the date, and it's important to note with the date, you can see here that I'm just running the core, the events calendar. We know that I don't have Pro installed because if I did have Pro, you'd see recurrence options down beneath here and the ability to set up this event as a recurrence pattern. The reason I'm not running Pro for this demo and something that you're really going to want to keep in mind as you use this is Eventbrite Tickets is not compatible with recurrence. It'll work alongside the Pro release and you'll have no problem working with it alongside the Pro release. But if you set up Eventbrite Tickets on a recurrence pattern, the tickets are only going to show in the first event of that recurrence pattern. This is not due to a limitation on the Modern Tribe side, it's unfortunately a limitation with the Eventbrite API. So if it's something you feel strongly about, you should make your voice heard to Eventbrite so that they can change it, and when they do, we'll certainly update our plugin to reflect that. For now though, just keep in mind that recurrence is not supported. So I've got the event, it's an all-day event taking place on the 30th. I've got my new venue in place, I've decided my new organizer. I'm not worrying about the cost for the event or an event website because I'm just going to leave those blank, but this is, up until this point, a straight standard event. If you've set up events with the events calendar before, you know what we're doing here. It's when we get down here that we start to see the Eventbrite specific functionality. And in order to actually trigger the Eventbrite functionality, I need to go to this register this event with eventbrite.com and change the no to yes. That's where I will set up my first ticket. You'll see all these new fields came into play by enabling yes, and this is how I'm going to set up the very first ticket for this event. I cannot set up multiple tickets for this event here on the back end of my site. I can only do the first one, and then I have to do the rest on the Eventbrite side, but this allows me to set the framework there and say, okay, what's the first ticket I'm going to allow? If I want multiple, I'll go over to Eventbrite and add the others. The first ticket I'm going to allow, and notice that the asterisk is required for a lot of these, so you do have to fill in these fields. I'm going to start off with adult tickets. I will not require to add a description, but I'm going to anyway. Then I have to decide when I want ticket sales to start and when I want ticket sales to end. They obviously have to start before they can end, and they obviously have to start and end before the event takes place. The date picker is going to have some rules that reflect this. Let's say I want them to go on sale tomorrow, and I want them to sell through Wednesday. I then need to determine what type are these going to be. Are they going to be set price where I say everybody who pays this ticket is going to pay 15 bucks? Do I want it to be donation based where people can decide what they want to give? Or do I want it to be free where it's just free? I think this is going to be a set price event. I'm going to make it 15 bucks. So I'm just going to drop 15 in there. Don't need a dollar sign. And for the quantity, I'm going to say we have 150 of them available. This means that when 150 people buy these adult tickets at $15, they're going to be all gone. They're going to be sold out and nobody else can buy them. Next up is determining the details of the service fee. Do I want the service fee, which Eventbrite charges, to be bundled in with the price that I'm defining right up here in the cost section? Or do I want to add that fee on top of the price? Either way you want to go, just make sure you select the proper radio button for it, and you'll be set. Then you get down to the accepted payment methods. And remember that you are going to have to select at least one online payment method for this to work. I'm going to select PayPal, and when I do that, you'll notice it brings up a few extra fields here. It brings me the offline options, because once I've selected an online option, I can also trigger whatever offline options I'd like. And for whichever ones I check, I have these fields down below that I can fill in for instructions. I don't have to give instructions for paying by check, but I do have to give an account email for PayPal. So I'm going to do payments at tribe, or excuse me, inbox at tri.be for my PayPal address. And then I will include some instructions for check because I'm going with a check option. If I hadn't checked any of the offline, if I was not going with check, cash, or send an invoice, I could leave all these blank. But since I am going with check, I have to add a payment detail instruction. So I'll just say, slip it under the mat. We got our PayPal email address in place. We are allowing check payment. We've given the instructions for that. So we're set. We're saying people could pay one of two ways. There are going to be 150 tickets available and they're going to cost 15 bucks. That's all we need to do in terms of the ticket administration. Now we have to decide, do we want it to go live or do we want it to stay in draft format on the Eventbrite side? Basically, I could do one of two things here, and we're going to explain this a little more in one of the upcoming screencasts. I could decide I want my WordPress event to go live, but the Eventbrite post to stay draft. I could set the Eventbrite status to live in the WordPress side draft, or I could leave both draft or push both live. 
What I'm going to do by leaving it draft on Eventbrite and by saving it draft on WordPress is I'm saying, okay, I want this event to be queued up and ready to go in both locations, but I don't want it live until I decide later down the road. Let's see what happens when we hit save draft. It's going to load for a second while it sends the event over to Eventbrite and makes the modification here on the WordPress side. And when it finishes saving and shows me this message that my draft is saved, you're going to notice that I have the message up top that clearly indicates the Eventbrite status is set to draft. What this says is, yes, you have this, we've linked it to Eventbrite, but we're not going to push it live until you say so, and we're going to show you this message to indicate that until you go down below and make that change. We have set up this event on the WordPress side, and I'm not going to push it live in this screencast, we'll check that out in a subsequent one, but let's just go down below and look at the Eventbrite area. You'll notice some of these fields have changed. We now have the option to say, do we want to leave this event associated with Eventbrite.com? If I leave it as yes, nothing is going to change. If I set it to no, it's going to unlink the two so that the event remains on my WordPress site, but there is no longer an Eventbrite connection, and if I want to set up Eventbrite tickets, I would have to manually go through that process again. Display events on the event page, or display tickets on the event page, is what you would expect it to be. It says, I want the tickets to show on the front end published event. You might have an event that's live on Eventbrite and live on WordPress and has tickets currently available for sale, but if this is set to no, those tickets are not going to be showing anywhere on the front end of the WordPress site. Make sure if you aren't seeing your tickets on the front end that you have this set to yes first. Only other thing I want you to keep in mind beyond the associated ticket information down here, which is pretty straightforward, and again, we will go into in greater depth in a subsequent screencast, is this Eventbrite event ID link. Note that it has created an entry on the Eventbrite side. And if I click over to that in the new tab, I can go modify this event on Eventbrite's page if I feel like I'd like to. Eventbrite does generally give you more options for modifying an event, and while a lot of those information, the information you configure there won't carry over to your WordPress site, if you want to beef up the description and the content on the Eventbrite listing, which is going to exist as well as your WordPress post, you can do that over here on Eventbrite. Whichever you prefer, just make sure that you are being consistent with it, and make sure that whatever you do at the end, you make sure to push everything to live. We'll check that out in Screencast 3. We'll come back and we'll walk through both the importing process and then in Screencast 4, we'll review the process of turning things live. But hopefully you get the process of setting up an event at this point and hopefully it all makes sense to you. See you in a few minutes.